the network. Sweet. So we're going to start off, Sean, with Spotify. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the, the fact that they've removed the um, listener count from the Discovered On playlist on desktop, which I think is a very disappointing thing to close out. Yeah, th- there's so many interesting arguments I hear about this. What, what is your perspective? So like, from one perspective, I can understand, you know, it was, you know, it's supposed to be like no one really uses it so much maybe because obviously it's not on mobile, but, and also they're thinking it's probably going to stop like the, the fake playlist so much, but I actually think that by taking away this, you lose transparency. So if I'm looking at, if I'm trying to picture a playlist, you know, a smaller playlist and I can see smaller artists, I know that that playlist is probably going to come up on their profile. And if, and if the amount of listeners is not correlating to the actual number of followers, then I know it's not a good playlist. But I won't have that option anymore to check. Right. And that's the interesting thing, man, because it's all about who are you trying to serve at the end of the day. Mm. All right. We can say, hey, this platform is for consumers. It's not necessarily for artists in that way. We use artists to serve consumers, but it's not necessarily for artists. So it does make things interesting right because you want to please artists to the extent that you can serve them to the consumers but at the end of the day it they they try to this is one of those politic things where you use an argument that sounds like you're doing good really mm-hmm. to also take more control over the platform and eliminate some of your competition because these third-party playlists yeah. are a real thing right they're useful but you take away some of the utility at, for the artist like you said, like it makes it a lot harder to understand how do I take advantage of, of this playlist? Which ones do I want to get on? And I know they say that it's, it helps more so with uh, making sure that people are focused on the quality of playlists and, and you know, not gaming numbers and things of that nature. But really, it just makes it, I, I don't really find a, a world where it's actually better for anybody. No, it's annoying because obviously it doesn't make any difference at all to bigger artists because obviously numbers are going to be big. But for independent artists and smaller artists, it's a big difference, especially as a lot of artists were tweeting out that it's, um, it was a really valuable free marketing tool and there aren't many of those around that are actually free and accessible to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and to me, though, at the end of the day, like I wouldn't overthink it because, look, if you see, you can still see the type of playlist that certain artists on all so you can still reach out to a playlist of an artist yeah. that you're listening to and things are, like that's one route, right? If I'm, if I'm listening to artists I, or I go to similar artists, I can see what playlist their music has been picked up on. So I'll just go reach out to those playlists. It makes sense. You know, you can tell still if it's owned by Spotify or not. So mm-hmm. there's still that path of kind of understanding the quality of a playlist, which is more how you want to be looking at playlists anyway. Like there's still paths to get there. And then you can utilize other sites like Chartmetric up yep. to, I mean, if you're paying for, you know, the professional premium account to start to get a feel of which of these, you, you pretty much see the exact same stats. So everything that Spotify is taking and more on Chartmetric. So that's still there. You just have to get some more money. Exactly. The important things for this are that usually you'd go onto desktop on Spotify and you go on the artist profile and you would see the five top players they're on. You'll no longer be able to see the listeners count. You'll still be able to see the playlist. And also, this doesn't impact Spotify for artists at all. You'll be able to see all the players you're on yourself on your own account. It doesn't affect that. You'll be able to see what players you're on and how many listeners are listening to your music. It's just on the front end for you know the general consumer, general user. You can't access it. Yeah. I mean, in, in that vein, I might actually flip. I mean, I, I could at least understand in that instance. Because if they're trying to say that they don't want people to follow a playlist based off of social proof, they want people to follow a playlist based off of whether they like the playlist. Is that mm-hmm. what they're trying to say? Well, maybe, but that doesn't, doesn't go far enough because to do that, they would remove the followers count from the playlists altogether, wouldn't they? If they're going to do that. Well, you're saying the consumer wouldn't see the playlist, though, right? Well, they'll be able to see the playlist. They just can't see the, the number of listeners it's got on well, those top well, five playlists. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. They they won't see the follower. But your your argument is that it wouldn't just be that the consumers can't see the follower account. You you think that if they really care, they wouldn't let anybody see the follower account? Yeah, I think so because obviously they but obviously you can everyone can see at the moment they can see the number of followers the playlist has got. But what you want to know is how many people are actually listening to that playlist. And removing this takes that away to some extent. It's just yeah. it's, the, it's the listeners that are more important than the followers. Are they yeah. actively engaged? I don't. I actually I disagree with that because I think that as a consumer, yeah, they should be focused on whether they like it, or whether they like a playlist or not. Nothing more than yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah. So, but on the back end, there is still utility. If I have a playlist, I'm gonna be able to know how many people are following my playlist because I can judge other metrics. There's a lot of reasons for me to understand that. So, I wouldn't say I don't know. Like just like anything, right? There's a lot of websites that don't allow you having to have an insight on the front end because it's not too many user experience that allows you to see a lot more deeper into it on the back end because there's all these functions to it. So yeah, the other I, point I, I made, the other point I made on the newsletter was that ultimately this was just on desktop. It wasn't on mobile apps, which is the main way that Spotify is used anyway. Therefore, will it make much of a difference? Probably now not. that part, yeah, now that part brings things into question. Like what are you doing or, or why are you going, if you, yeah, why are you going about it this way? Because as you said, it's used mostly on mobile. So what's the point of just doing it on one or not or not the other? I guess we have to wait to see for, for this one. But if this is just a sign of things to come, we're always going to find a different way around to yeah. do whatever we need to do. It's the network. <laughs> Thank you.